I mean, mage. So, you know, coming out and we talked about the aggression now, this is kind of a slow it down type thing. So, now how do you feel rogue versus the mage here? Not a matchup I've ever played in my life. So, I, I mean, <laughs> honestly, uh, I have no clue. Who has the advantage here? Well, Alchemix's decks are all three aimed at being able to pick off Miracle Rogue okay. in these situations where Miracle Rogue has been able to be disruptive throughout the course of the game. So like when you look at his, his Zoo deck, he wants to just be relentlessly aggressive throughout the course of it. You look at his Hunter deck, it's a Charge Hunter deck. Traditionally, it's thought to have a good matchup versus Miracle Rogue. And when you look at this Mage deck, it's lined up in the same way. There's a lot of card draw coming into it, but that card, the purpose of that card draw is simply to get him to more of his burn spells. So if you're seeing him able to curve out on his minions early on, which uh, this Sorcerer's Apprentice is gonna help him do a lot, this Water Elemental, if it gets active, it's going to shut off these attacks from Kit Kats, which cuts a portion of his damage that he would normally have. It's going to increase the amount of, of uh, damage he has to do through spells, which is going to increase his critical mass at that point. So he's looking to pressure him out of the game really early on on the back of his opponent not being able to disrupt him very efficiently. Okay, makes a lot of sense. And also here, I mean, something we haven't seen from the Mage is they've not really been having those good draws. You know, we haven't seen a single Sorcerer's Apprentice even get drawn into a hand yet. Right. So finally, he's actually having you know a reasonable play here. Right. Um, being able to get that early minion out. You talked about you know wanting to use that to clear the board, not wanting to use uh, your spells to burn through these early minions and everything. And you know he is going to be able to start with that. Obviously, uh, the abyss you're going to be able to come out there. But still, at least it was an abyss, not a backstab or something like that that did deal with it. Right. So, you know, it's a, you feel a little bit better about that, wouldn't you? This is what you got to really feel good about is that he's using this poison to help take out these mirror images. And what this says to me is that he wants to get this Azure Drake Next active, as well. and he doesn't want to have to fight through these mirror images. But uh, at this point, something else to note is he's aware that Water Elemental is a presence in this deck, so he may not get a chance to use these poisons mm -hmm. later on until he draws a Blade Flurry. So I like the fact that he's used this, but again, the advantage here coming from the Mage in that it's it's oh wow. threat, it's that's actually very pretty that's pretty important. Man. He could, oh okay, never mind. I was gonna say he could backstab that and then double deadly poison to kill that. So I mean no no it still be it still be at five health it still be at one health. Oh yeah, it's two it's plus a two six, yeah. six health minion. He yeah, shift the face there instead. Just had a brain fart so, there. I was um, thinking because three would. Yeah. <laughs> right. So I think I think that uh, Alchemix read here is is that Kit Kats doesn't have a backstab. So this draw backstab is kind of lucky. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, it's like, you have to draw some sort of removal throughout the course of the game. Wow, yeah. he's already got two Shadow Steps too. So this Azure Drake providing a kind of a, a mild annoyance when you're in Alchemix spot, but he's got plenty of ways to deal with it. So this is kind of the start that he wanted. Mm -hmm. And at this, this is the point in the game where your minions lose a little bit of their value, which is why you want to draw them early and your burn spells start to really pick up a lot of slack. So if, you're gonna, if you don't see any Earth and Ring Farseers come out, Alchemixes can develop an advantage in this game, and something like that Flame Strike can clear out minions that end up being troublesome. So, say uh, Earth and Ring Farseer and SI7 Agent find its way to the board, in two turns he's going to be able to clear that super easily. Yeah. Now, I mean, the, the double arcane missiles, I feel like, you know, there's a pretty solid chance of being able to get that in hero power range. Right. And maybe, yeah, so there he's going to be able to get that. Uh, that's very nice. And, you know, this, this Frost Elemental is doing work. It's, you know, 6 HP is kind of an awkward amount to get right. rid of. Um, it is definitely causing him some problems here, and really, he doesn't have much of a, a play here. I mean, what do you do? Just drop the Blood Mage and just pass? You, you, gotta, you gotta start finding the cards you want, and this is the, sort of the point we were talking about this Water this Elemental. Like play. This just shut off six points of damage potential mm -hmm. yep. from Kit Kats. So, not only is it dealing damage, but it's buying him more time to wow. find these burn spells he needs. So, this is the, the stage that it gets to when Mage has a big advantage against this deck. Uh, I think. A, a lot of it is seated in context, so I don't have a ton of experience in this matchup, but I have enough to know that when you get to these sorts of certain points, big advantages are coming out from the mage again because he's shutting off these points of damage from this extra deadly poison, which is kind of unfortunate to draw. But two cold bloods now with this Leroy. Two cold bloods, two shadow steps, Leroy. 18, 22. This is 26 damage, and with the poison and the blade flurry, this is a potentially Miracles lethal. Miracles are possible, man. <laughs> so, like, what what I would like to see here from Kit Kats is he knows he's on the ropes at this point. Yeah. Uh, he knows that Alchemix has drawn a lot of cards, and so he's likely to have a lot of burn spells. I think you drop this Leroy. I think you double cold blood it. I think you get in for 14 uh, for 14 points of damage. You shadow step it back to your hand. You play this deadly poison, and then hope to finish the game next turn on the back of this blade flurry, clearing out any potential tots, and then Leroy. It looks again. like that's that's what he's thinking about doing, man. Yeah. Uh, Leroy gets dropped. Double cold blood going to come down here. A very intelligent play, has to be said. You know, and, and sometimes it, it feels like these weird plays, but it's the highest percentage chance to win, right? right. So he's going to shadow step it back, and um, he is going to have this deadly poison available as well. And on the back of that, I mean, he has he's going to have uh, six from deadly poison. Uh, weapon attack plus blade flurry. Plus he's gonna have twelve from the Leroy. 
So yeah, he actually doesn't even need to drop the deadly poison this turn to, because yeah. he doesn't want to risk it being blown up by something oh, okay. like as crazy as like an acidic swamp ooze. Mm -hmm. So uh, six, nine, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. This is 17 damage, but he doesn't have the mana for it. Yeah, no, that's a shame. Now, in this in this situation, not having the mana, uh, do you think you go with Arcane and Intellect, or you just try to get as much damage in as uh, possible? It's, uh, I don't. It's it's just like at this point, he's got to be no, he's got to know that two Leroy's are coming next turn. Yeah, and he's got to know that he's got some other source of damage, or that he's going to try to rely on drawing it. So I think his best chance to win. Uh, he doesn't have something like Defender of Argus in his deck. I think he's got to dig for a second mirror image here and hope. Mm -hmm. And otherwise, just you flood the board and hope that things turn out right. But this is just one of those spots, again, where uh, the, these high-level players, they spot these two-turn lethals, and they understand how to fight against them. So when he sees that a mirror image is already gone, and he knows that his opponent's playing an aggressive deck given by the Sorcerer's Apprentice, he's got to go for this big Leroy turn, which, honestly, I think a lot of people wouldn't have done. Yeah, I, I don't think very many people would have done that at all. So... Uh, definitely impressive to see that play. Um, and, you know, he is going to be able to... Uh, why do you think he holds the last mana worm? He, does, he doesn't need to play the mana worm. It's, just, it it's, it's inconsequential at this point. Anyway. He's got enough damage to kill him next turn anyway. So, at this point, if his opponent's only out his Blade Flurry, he wants to have one extra minion in case his opponent just, for whatever reason, can't kill him. But we know that Kit Kats is going to kill... Oh my gosh! We actually didn't account for the fact that 25% of the time, this Knife Juggler outright kills oh, wow. the Leroy Jenkins. So a small misstep here from Kit Kats. He actually took a 100% chance to win and reduced it down to 25% by playing that out of order. So that sequencing could have been a huge misstep coming into this game. And this is exactly what we were talking about. These players got to shake off these losses and they really need to focus. It looks like a small 